It's Dean Luggy and Quentin Grant. Josh Kendall is on assignment, so to speak. It's the Dog Post Roundtable. This is Memorial Day edition of the Roundtable. And Quentin, we're going to talk about recruiting in general this time. And uh, later in the session, we're going to talk about how uh, the upcoming Mark Rick camp will, camp will be a little bit different than those in the past. Uh, but right now, let's talk a little bit about Mike Gilliard, a guy who you've gotten to know pretty well. Tell me your experience of dealing with him over the last four months, and uh, were you surprised that he decided to pick Georgia in the end? Uh, no, uh, I was not surprised he picked Georgia. In fact, uh, we kind of knew that was the way he was going for, gosh, I guess the, probably the, about three weeks, three to oh, pretty much a month uh, before he committed. Uh, we he kind of got that feeling the whole time, but. Uh, we knew uh, he pretty much told me that was the way he was going, but he just he just hadn't committed yet, hadn't uh, pulled the trigger on, on a verbal to uh, to Georgia. Um, great what kid. What do you think he, slowed him down with that? Uh, well, he talked about he had to make sure the academics and all were in order, but the academics are in order at Georgia. That's not really a question. I really think it was playing time, and uh, I think I think some of the other. Uh, coaches from other teams that kind of got in his ear about, hey, Georgia stacked at linebacker. Uh, you, you're not going to be able to play early there. Come here and play early. And uh, who that was, I'm not exactly sure. But uh, and, and I think that goes on in recruiting all the time. But uh, him hearing that made him think, well, maybe I can't. Maybe I don't even have a chance of playing early. And he went in a couple weeks before and talked to uh, to Coach Jancic about it. And I think he pretty much made him feel a lot more comfortable about the whole thing. And from there on, it was just a matter of time with his commitment to Georgia. Of course, Gilliard, the 11th of uh, – the most recent of 11 commitments that Georgia's got. And uh, I drove down to uh, Valdosta the other day, Quentin, to see Mike Gilliard and spend some time with him. Um, right now he's playing middle linebacker for Valdosta, which, you know, when you go to that stadium, it's just amazing. Uh, it's, it's like a, a real small Division One stadium. It's very nice. And you go in there and you watch him play. And he's playing middle linebacker right now. I don't see him playing middle linebacker at Georgia. I think if you you know he will either be an outside linebacker, or maybe he'll be a safety. That's kind of hard to tell when you look at him, you walk around and all that. He's very aggressive. Um, I think he enjoys contact. Um, he. Um, you know, he was really a lot of uh, – he was he was very nice to get to know, I'll say that, and I know you've dealt with him a lot more than I did. And uh, he just was always uh, easy to deal with, real real low-key, real real laid back. And, uh, you know, I think uh, Coach Tomberlin at, at, at Valosta, who knows a thing or two about uh, high-level athletes, he just said to me when we were down there, hey, look, you know, Mike wants to go to the place where he feels like it's the best school. You know, Things happen in football. Some guys get injured. Some guys change positions. And he just wanted to go to the place where he would feel the most comfortable going to school. And that's that's what they had. Now, Coach Tomlin in Georgia, and Coach Tomlin, uh, Mike was saying, explained to him that he really felt like in-state guys got treated better at in-state schools. And I know Florida was on him for a while, and they kind of uh, went away a little bit at the end, but. I wonder, what do you think about that? I mean, in-state guys going to in-state schools, uh, you know, do guys, do you think, generally speaking, uh, Quentin, when they go to Georgia, do you think if they're from Georgia, they maybe get, I don't know if treated better is the best way, but, I mean, what do you think about that sort of thinking? I don't know that I'd use the word uh, treated better. I think you're going to use the word fit in better. Maybe. Uh, and especially at a place like Georgia where you've got a ton of Georgia kids. Uh, they grow up with Georgia, the G, I mean, just the whole the whole tradition uh, of, of Athens and, and Sanford Stadium and all that, and, and they love it. Mike Gearyard loved Georgia. Okay, there's and no he, doubt he about it. Four hours from Georgia, from Athens, and it and it still didn't matter. Uh, talking to him, you'd have thought he went to school right right outside of Athens. Uh, as far as his love for Georgia, you knew it was there. And I'll also bet. I mean, I don't know this for a fact. That's probably why Florida backed off him in the beginning or in, here at the end, because they knew they weren't going to get him. Um, so I don't know who I would use the thing treated better because I don't think that's I don't think Coach Rick and that staff's going to treat those kids any different no matter if they're from Hawaii as to South Carolina or Georgia or Alabama or, or Tennessee. Um, those kids are all going to be treated the same when they step on campus in June. 
but it, it's probably a little bit easier to fit in because a lot of these guys grew up playing against each other, and, and they go to these combines and, and the Georgia camps, and, and they all know each other. So probably fit in is a, is a better term. I think that's interesting. Uh, speaking of the camps, as we transition to that, this this year will be different. You've been to several of these uh, Marbury camps over the years, Quentin. But now, with more than 50% for sure of this class signed, or excuse me, not signed, but committed, how do you think this camp will be different this year? It's 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 certainly I, you know there have been times in the past where you know. Uh, Clint Bowling, Cornelius Washington, and guys like that committed out of camp. Well, you know, this year that doesn't necessarily seem to be the case just because of the numbers game. Yeah, you don't really know that that's a, that's a done deal. And, and going into these camps, and especially at Rick's camp, it seems like he probably gets on average about two commitments a camp. And it's something for you to look forward to and for – uh, uh, the people that are a part of Dog Post and just a part of Georgia in general and Georgia fans to look forward to. And you just don't really know if that's going to happen this year. Um, kids commit earlier and earlier, and you just uh, – Georgia's not far from being done. So um, a lot of kids that will probably be at the camp are going to already be committed. And so do you get those two commitments that you generally get there? It's, I guess that's kind of up in the air this year. Um and I guess that really depends on who attends who attends the camp at the same time. Right, and, and actually, literally, uh, if I'm not mistaken, nobody committed last year, but that was because Ben Jones, uh, Ben Jones, a couple of days later committed to Georgia after checking out Alabama, and um, and the year before was Clint Bowling. Clint Bowling and uh, Cornelius Washington. That's mistaken. right. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah. it's one of those things where you know how, when we'll tackle this one of these roundtable discussions soon with Josh. Is it a good thing to get so many guys committed early? I think that's a fair question. Now, let me ask you this, Quentin, and, and you know you've dealt with some 2010 kids already, but the focus for this, this camp coming up in a couple of weeks will be, if, if I'm not mistaken, you know, tying up loose ends for 2009, and then 2010 and 2011, seeing how those guys compete against one another and the brief time we've got remaining here. What, I mean, you're looking at guys who are not even juniors, actually, even on the field. That's what a lot of this focus will be. Boy, that's got to be tough to and sometimes pick in, in recruiting, you know, watching recruiting and scouting it. It's easy to pick out guys, okay? But, man, that's a lot of 2010, 20, uh, 2011 kids that have not hit their prime at all. No, and, and it's, it's almost going from a science to a guessing game at, at that point. Right. I think 2010 – it, that's starting to, to come into the picture, especially with the amount of film and things like that that are out now. And and tw- but 2011 kids that are just going to be sophomores next year. I mean, that's just there's so much more growing and developing and all that's going to happen for these kids physically in the next two years. Um, but you know, some of these 2010 guys, I mean, they're already getting a lot of attention. It's crazy. And, you bring up a kid, just a kid I've been dealing with, uh, Julian Horton. Uh, he's getting a lot of attention, and you know what? Uh, he's going to be there at I've Mark Reed's camp. And he, he deserves the attention. He is a and, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing him, too. Uh, he's a kid I've talked to a lot, but I have not seen him live, and I'm looking forward to seeing him, too. And those are the kids that we'll be looking at. It, it won't be us trying to pick out no. the uh, 09 kids no, um, or who's going to be in that class of 09. It's going to be the 2010 and 2011 kids you and I are going to be looking at and trying to trying to see, you know, what do they got. So. Well, I've got my 2010 list going. It's kind of long, and, and you just kind of, at those camps and these combines, you kind of fig- try to figure out, well, listen, who's legit at this stage? But, um, you know, we'll pick that up in a couple of weeks after, after we do, the, you know, after we get through that camp. Um, Quentin, it's not, you know, Josh has not been here, but we've done the roundtable nonetheless, and I appreciate everybody uh, listening. As usual, I hope everyone has a good Memorial Day weekend and a good Memorial Day today. Um, Quentin, any other final words? Nope. Uh, Enjoy the holiday. (laughs) Thanks, uh, Quentin, and uh, we'll see you all next week.